In this video I'll be talking about the TI-99 home computer game, Adventure, and how to play this game in the modern era. In the late 70s, Texas Instruments joined the personal computer business with the TI-99. They even roped in Bill Cosby to do their commercials. Mmm, jello pudding! Most of the software for this computer was cartridge based. Slide the cartridge into the computer and start playing. And there it was. Steve Jobs never gave you this much for your money. Then there was Scott Adams, a computer game pioneer who programmed text adventure games in the late 70s and 80s. He ported the games to many of the popular computers of the time, including the TI-99. You would buy the adventure cartridge and then buy any of the 12 adventures on compact cassette or diskette. The 12 original adventure games included Mission Impossible, famous for CBS demanding a name change to avoid confusion with the TV series, or the movies that came later. The movie should have been called Physics Impossible anyway. So there's a splash screen. It asks you to load the adventure you want to play. I'm going to try Savage Island, one of the toughest adventures that Scott Adams wrote. Okay, I'm on a beach by the ocean. Visible items are sand, large stone head, edge of impenetrable jungle. The games have a two word verb noun parser, so let's look head. It resembles me. Weird. Now I can always go to iFiction on the internet and play these games. Okay, so here's Scott Adams Adventures. If we scroll down here, um, Okay, here it is, Savage Island. I'm in a beach by ocean. It's not a promising beginning. It's not showing me what I'm carrying. Uh, okay, look head. Okay, resembles me wired. So iFiction is well-intentioned, but it's slow across the internet and doesn't really do anything to add to the adventures. Plus, you're losing the nostalgic aspect of the screen presentation. For example, on the TI, when you were playing, the screen was green, but then if you died, the screen would turn red. And for some reason, in Pirate Adventure, you could still do things when you were dead. Uh, if you walked into darkness, the screen would turn dark blue. And if you won the game, the screen would turn yellow. In order to emulate a TI on a modern computer, you're going to need three things. You're going to need an emulator, ROMs for the TI hardware and software, and also you're going to need a computer to play it on. Now there is some choice in emulators. For Windows, there's Classic 99, a free emulator with some of the more popular games included, but there's no adventure here. Then there's Win 99 4A Simulator, with a fairly complete library, including the Scott Adams adventures. Great interface, but because it's a simulator and not a true emulator, there are some oddities. The only option on the Mac OS is Mac Mess. It's an open source multi-system emulator that can emulate any computer ever made as long as you have the ROMs for it. It's based on Mac MAME, an arcade game emulator. For example, Okay, drop my quarter in. Yeah. Oh. The last time I downloaded MacMess was 2005, so I wanted to see what improvements the open source community had done in the last several years. But now it's completely different. There's no documentation on how to use this. Uh, uh, how about, um, no, Ugh. So my suggestion is to get the ancient version, 0.95 or thereabouts. I can't find this old version on the internet anymore, so please ask me if you need it. You'll need the hardware ROMs for the TI, which are these seven bin files. For the games and software, you'll use basic ROM files. Depending on the program, they may be split into one, two, or three parts, which will need to be separately loaded into the emulator. 
in the emulator, go to the video tab and make sure you select full screen, not actual size. Actual size is 280 by 210, which is pretty small on a modern computer. So here's full screen, and you just have to press command period to jump back to the Mac. Press fire to begin. So now we have the ROMs. Okay, now the Mac. Now if you have a Mac that runs 10.7 or 10.8, this version of Mac MacMess doesn't work because it's a PowerPC app. If you are in that situation, just get an old G3 for like 20 bucks. Make sure it's not one of those store display units with no internals. Damn! When you start Mac Mess, you choose your hardware. Then select your cartridge, in this case Adventure, which happens to be a single file. Then I have a diskette image here with all the Scott Adams adventures. Here's a list of what's on the disc image. Uh, all of Scott Adams' adventures, including his Marvel Comics ones. But some of these others I've never heard of. Okay, if I check out the March 1985 issue of Micropendium, page 7. Ah, write your own games for the TI Adventure module. Scott Adams, move over! So here's the emulation startup screen. Okay, let's try the first one. Adult Adventure. Okay, so he actually put his home address in the game. Little did he know. Let's check out where this classic was created. <laughs> figures. Anyway, I'm in a bedroom. Visible items are a king size bed, panties, bra, boxer shorts, undershirt, writing in wall. Okay. Read writing. You've been given a drug to make you forget who you are. You must find the account number of my uh, whatever box. Now look, bed. You see nothing special? Your bladder is full of piss. You must take a leak. Okay, well so much for that. Maybe Scott Adams shouldn't move over quite yet. After the 12 classic adventures, Scott Adams would release adventure number 13, The Sorcerer of Claymore Castle. His adventures generally got harder as you go through the series, and this one was very hard to solve. One puzzle actually requires you to notice a tiny detail in the box artwork. Insane! A year later, I noticed an ad in a TI-99 flyer for a game called Return to Pirate's Isle. You know, it didn't say Scott Adams, it's got its own cartridge and it has graphics. So it doesn't sound like Scott Adams, but there's his trademark 13 treasures mentioned. Is this a Scott Adams game? I just didn't want to send away to buy it, wait two weeks, put it in, and then see something like this. And you know, Scott Adams did go back and do graphics versions of his games for some systems. But the graphics were slow to fill and couldn't really compete with the pictures you built in your mind of these environments. So I really wasn't a big fan of the idea of graphic adventures. But I took a chance and bought it. Now the moment of truth. Yes, adventure number 14. Return to Pirate's Isle is a sequel to adventure number 2, Pirate Adventure, and is predictably very tough but the puzzles are still logical. This game was actually an exclusive that Scott Adams did for the TI home computer. According to Adams, they had to do some clever programming to fit these sharp graphics in a 48K cartridge. 
It is actually one of his best games. So you figure out that first puzzle and you get to see these great graphics. And these were pretty good for the time. Despite the quality of the products, both TI-99 and Adventure International would end up in Never Never Land shortly after. But even 30 years later, they are not forgotten. up the bell and says a five dollar gross oh. oh that was dead ah look at that guy drop some shells drag Going on here. They're not coming down for us. <laughs> well, we only got five. Well, what's with these asteroids? Get out there, blow boy. 